bridge loans bridge loans are bridge loans are creative so when at the beginning of the show i was mentioning how uh we're get when you get to like a little bit of a higher price point a lot of buyers maybe need to sell the home that they currently own to use the equity from that sale to purchase their up leg and that when you're in a competitive marketplace like we're in right now, contingent offer through so there are a lot of financial institutions even our company has options to give you what's called a bridge loan which basically is is a temporary loan to bridge the gap of what you need to be non-contingent uh and then when you sell your home that you currently own then you pay, use those proceeds to pay off the bridge loan and that's the best way that we can think of right now uh to be able to get you uh, to submit offers non-contingent and the best chance that you can get offers accepted in a competitive marketplace like we are in today. Absolutely. And the key to remember with this is understanding where the marketplace is. Right now, if you find your dream home and you're contingent on selling your current home, despite the magic that Lane and I and Philip and our team can perform for you as a buyer and how our rate of our success rate of getting offers through is, is, is higher than about anybody out there, a contingency on a sale is still a red flag and a very worrisome topic for a potential seller. So that's why the bridge loans are expensive or, or, or popular. They are expensive. You're going to have to be willing to pay for them. But for that, for that buyer that just says, gosh, I got to figure out a way to be competitive and I have not sold my house yet. It's an option. Are your uh, interest rates going to be at a premium? Absolutely. I'm sure Lane has uh, some stats on that as well for us. As far as the interest rates being at a premium, yes, they probably are. But guess what? The If you have a house that's very sellable and you know you, that your house is going to sell within the first couple of weeks anyways, if, let's say you're paying 10% or something like a very high. I'm, I just use a very high interest rate there. But let's say you are paying 10%. If you only have it for 30 to 60 days, it's probably not going to be that much money in the grand scheme of things. Because guess what? Like if uh, the way homes are appreciating today, let's say they're appreciating four to five percent year over year. If you didn't do that, if you didn't do that bridge loan, the house is going to be more expensive anyway. So you're probably actually going to save money doing the bridge loan, even on a higher interest rate than if you waited the two months to maybe throw a rent back or something like that to buy the home because then it's already going to appreciate a certain amount in value anyway. So the home just got more expensive if you waited two or three months to purchase down the road. See, Lane, as always, that's a fantastic point, And he brings it right down um, to an analytical level. So it's literally looking at the options and understanding that the bridge loan is going to be for a short period of time, often just three months. So even that 10% rate annually, you think, oh my goodness, that's ridiculous. I, I it, This is not a payment that's going to be set in stone or a payment that you're going to be having. It's simply a bridge. And I think that's the, the key to remember if we're thinking about a bridge loan, it's a bridge. We're bridging the gap between the two ends and it's analyzing it, bringing it right down to the objective and say, if I were to do this, I carry it for two months. What's my out-of-pocket cost going to be? I carry it for three months. What's the out-of-pocket cost? Take it all the way up to a worst-case scenario to six months. I always am a big fan of figure out the worst-case option, the worst-case scenario with any plan that we're looking at and say, if that were to happen, could that work for me? And I'm going to just segue for a minute here. When we had the, the meltdown in 2008, uh, literally we all melted down in some ways or another. And I went back to some of my old Dale Carnegie CDs. And those of you will know Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends, Influence People back in the 30s. It was a milestone book and his organization still thrives today. One of the things that I've taken from that time is always when you have a scenario, fast forward to what do you think is the worst case outcome from that? Get wrapped around your head, how you prepare for that. 95% of the time that will never happen. But if you do that, it just gives you a sense of calm and peace figuring out the rest of it. So that's another little, that's just a side tip for today that I found extremely valuable in, in my life. Um, and I think on anything we look at, just figure out what's the worst case, the longest term possible. Does that make sense to you, Lane? No, that makes sense. And I was thinking, you know, how I'm, you just mentioned how I'm analytical. I was thinking, let's say it's a million dollar house and it appreciates on average 5% every year. Um, what is that? $50,000 in a year as far as, as far as appreciation. And let's say you need 500,000 
and the interest rate is 10%, it's still $50,000 in a year. So you basically, the amount of money that it costs you to make to do this bridge loan is the same amount of money that the house is appreciating in value anyways. And knowing that being a, a, a contingent buyer is, pr is practically impossible in today's uh, real estate environment, it's probably worth exploring that bridge loan option because it's gonna end up evening out anyways. So if you needed to wait two or three months to be able to buy, your house is gonna be more expensive based on two or three months worth of appreciation. And then if you went the bridge loan option and you have to pay a little bit, but get the house now, it's going to be a wash at the end based on those numbers. A couple of things, Lane, too. Also, talk to us about how qualifying for a bridge loan, what, what does qualifying for a bridge loan look like? Because again, if I'm uh, correct, we're going to have two mortgage payments for a period of time, correct? Yeah. And, and you know what? Uh, that financial institution is probably going to look into how much equity you hold in the home, how sellable your house really is. They're going to probably do some sort of a walkthrough to determine the upgrades and to determine the, if the price that you're setting and the equity, the, the, whatever loan amount you have left in. And you still have to do some sort of an escrow process. And there is a, there is a, a, a lien put against the home to, for it to be paid off. But um, if, if your house is sellable, if you do have equity, if it's not broken down and like, you're going to pass the, the, the in-person inspection. You're going to be able to prove to that institution that you have equity in the home that's going to, that you can use to, to buy. And the process, even though it seems complicated, it's actually relatively simple and, and we can kind of walk you through all that. Absolutely. And the second thing I wanted to add to this, and it ties into the, to the first topic uh, that we talked about, two of the lease purchase options, we always advise that you talk to your tax, your accounting professionals and so forth, but start the conversation with the Sack and Stone team. Start it with us. Let's lay out the, the ideas. We can help you get the ball rolling. We also have referral sources that we can refer to you that are the experts in each of the individual fields if indeed you don't have those people kind of in your back pocket or you know in your arsenal. But start the conversation with us and we will have enough information, enough knowledge again to get, get started. Absolutely.